On today's episode, we are getting in the kitchen with Chef T. We're gonna be talking faith, family, legacy, and the importance of never giving up on your dreams. Stay tuned in for this tasty and fun episode of Authentic Living. This is Chef T doing the authentic living takeover today. We're at Something Fishy here located in Apopka. So we're going to give you some uh, seafood options that we think and we love that are very uh, flavorful and are healthy choices for everyone to, to, to make on their own. Uh, they're very simple. Anyone can make them. You don't need to be a chef like myself to make them. Um, you just need to little, have a little passion and a little time in the kitchen. Doesn't take too long. Only takes a few minutes. So what we have set out here today is uh, we're going to do, uh, we're going to show you some of our seafood options that we have here at Something Fishy. We're also going to give you a, a, a keto option. There are a lot of people out there today on the keto diet. We're going to give them some options for those. Uh, we also have some options that are not fried. We've got a lot of options that are not fried here at Something Fishy. So we're going to throw some of those out. So people are looking for something healthy, something nutritious, something quick and easy to make. We're going to walk them through that today. So. So we're going to start with, these are some of the options we have today. So we have just simple mixed greens here. Uh, we have a jasmine rice, jasmine cilantro lime rice here. So we take fresh cilantro, grind it up with a little white truffle oil and uh, some lime and uh, garlic. We add that and make that uh, fresh here every day. Then we have a black bean and corn salsa. So we use some black beans, corn, roasted corn, excuse me, some green peppers, green onions, and uh, red onions, and we make that up as well which also has cilantro in it then we just have some fresh cut radishes nothing special there um, this is our house slaw we'll go into that a little later but we've got uh, regular cold slaw again we have some green onions we have some radishes in that as well we also have kale in that and our house special sauce but we're gonna go into something a little later where we don't have to use that with our special sauce because the sauce does have some fructose in it and you know again if you want to do low carb or low keto you don't want to have that that additional sugar um, um, then we just have some other spices here. We have some garlic, we have some green onions again, a little white wine, which we're gonna use in a, one of our dishes here. We have our special butter that we use here. This is a garlic Parmesan butter. It's a great butter. If you ever need a little sample of it, you can come by and grab one from me. I don't mind giving a little sample out. Uh, the onions again, we have, a, we have two of those. And then we have our house seasoning. So we're gonna start off with, we have some lobster main lobster we use here. We have claw and knuckle. There are some leg components in here as well, just to keep the cost down. You don't have to always buy claw, knuckle, and tail. You can sometimes use claw, knuckle, and leg. You know, the price reduces the price a good amount, so it makes it more economical to enjoy seafood more often. We have some fresh ahi tuna here. I get it cubed. We also buy it in steak form, and we cube it as well. But this you can eat fresh, or seared. Some people come in and they have it well seared. I don't recommend it that way, but it's to each other's preference, however you want it. Then we have some fresh salmon here. This is farm-raised salmon. We sometimes, we do get uh, a, a wild salmon, but the most of the time here, to keep our cost down for our customer base, we use a farm salmon. And then the piece de resistance is uh, a Chilean sea bass. Now this is wild. It's a great fish. You can tell by the color and the texture. It's a phenomenal fish. Um, it's also called, I believe, the Pangonian toothfish or dogfish, um, but that is the, the Chilean sea bass. It's got a great buttery, warm texture and flavor to it, and it's just 
a great option for anyone who's looking for something that's not too fishy and looking for a good seafood option. So when you're looking at seafood, just remember, you know, seafood shouldn't be smelly. Okay, it does have a smell to it. You're always gonna get a smell to the seafood and you can, you can always smell it. And it does smell like the sea or the ocean, of course, because it's going to. But it shouldn't be overly fragrantful. You shouldn't be, oh my gosh, what is that smell? You shouldn't ever have that when you're smelling seafood. Um, when you're, also, when you're looking at whole fish, make sure you look at the eyes, make sure they're bright. Make sure the gills are red or very red or pink uh, because that lets you know how fresh the fish is and how long it's been sitting out, quite honestly. Um, you should also do the touch test. It should, it should always bounce back. When you just touch fish, it should always bounce back to its original form where it's at. Um, the ahi tuna, if, if it ever gets a little dark, you know it's losing its freshness. So it should always be red like this is and kind of bright, kind of a crimson color to it. That's it for, for what we're gonna do. We're gonna start cooking and putting a bowl together. Today we're gonna build a bowl. What we do here at Something Fish, we sell a lot of them. So we're gonna build you what we're gonna call a, a mega bowl or I can't use the, the S word bowl, but we're gonna build up a, 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 a great bowl or a, a Leviathan, I like to call it, but my wife tells me not to use that word. Uh, but we're gonna build a bowl with multiple components of protein, and then we're gonna build you a bowl that's a keto, so you can see different options of where we can be at. So we've added the butter to the pan, we've got a little heat to it, we're gonna add some garlic. We're gonna add our garlic, Parmesan, peppercorn butter as well. Just let that melt evenly. And then we're gonna add our Chilean sea bass. And a lot of times you don't need a lot of seasoning. People say, oh, what type of spice is the seasoning? Yeah, we do have an in-house spice and seasoning. But if you just have a little S&P, a little salt and pepper, just add a little salt and pepper to it. You can get some regular blackening seasoning if you like and just put it on top. And you want this to have a nice sear on the bottom. So we're gonna need to let this sit for about a minute, maybe a minute and a half on each side. So right now, I'm gonna keep going and multitask. And I'm gonna cook this salmon as well. So for our salmon, this is the sesame seed oil, canola, and olive oil with some soy sauce in this pan. And we're gonna wait and let that get hot as well. Ready? We'll put all three of those in there. We got a nice sear. And then we're gonna finish this off in the oven. We wanna finish that off. So right now, we're gonna go through the ahi tuna. So the ahi tuna, you just eat this raw. But what I'm gonna do is we're gonna add a little poke sauce to it. And we just shake that up good and just pour that on top. But the sauce is so flavorful, it's phenomenal. So it's kind of a soy sauce, red and green onions, I think there's some ginger in there as well. That's all you have to do with the poke and the ahi tuna. Throw that away. So we're gonna put that with the greens. So we just add that like this. We're gonna add a little ratch. Give a little crunch to your bowl. We're gonna add some BBC, which we call it black bean corn salsa. We're gonna get dangerous and add, uh, we're gonna add a little lobster to it in the middle. Right on top. And then to keep it pure keto, I'm gonna add our sauteed cabbage, which is our slaw, just sauteed with some fresh butter and um, rice wine vinegar. Put that there. We finish that off. 
Put some green onions. And there is your adi tuna with fresh lobster and uh, radish, black bean corn salsa, and our sauteed cabbage. So our next bowl, we're gonna work back on is our, uh, our Chilean sea bass. So we're gonna add our regular house raw. Again, we'll put some black bean corn salsa in there. I'll probably have to add a little more. Gonna add some radishes. I'm gonna add some lobster to this one as well. And put that in a different quadrant here. We're gonna add our Chilean sea bass. salmon we're gonna put a piece of salmon on that and again you can finish that with some green onions if you like and that's one of our regular in-house bowls that we run daily so now you've got our regular house law black bean corn salsa radishes again our fresh lobster, the Chilean sea bass, which is a specialty we don't have every day, and our, and our salmon, which we do have every day. Well, those are two of our premier great bowls that you can come in and get any day, all day long here at Something Fishy. Hey guys, back here with Chef T. Listen, he took over the first segment. I'm so glad he did. He created some amazing dishes in the kitchen. So Chef T, it's so great to sit down with you. Oh, it's great to be with you. Great bread on fish. I mean, this is pretty impressive what we have in front of us. So tell our viewers again what you made for us in the first segment. So we made two, what we call build a bowls here at Something Fishy. So we made, at first we made a, a keto bowl. So we have one with has some sauteed cabbage mm -hmm. and our black bean corn salsa radishes, ahi tuna, which is raw with a poke sauce on top, and just some lobster with some fresh green onions on top. That's amazing. And the other we have, which uh, has a base of rice, again has some black bean corn salsa, radish, has some lobster, our house slaw, mm -hmm. and has Chilean sea bass, which we blackened, and our house uh, salmon, which is also blackened. One so, of the things that I love about this, not only does it look amazing, it smells amazing, but it's good for your body too. It and is, I think it that's is. That's a big important part of our journey is nourishing our body with healthy food. And so right. Thanks for kind of breaking it down for us. You gave us the one-on-one -on -one of how to pick out, you know, the right type of seafood and basic ways to prepare it too. So right. I want to chat with you a little bit too. I want to hear the backstory about this because you haven't always been Chef T, right? No, not at all. So when did your love for cooking begin? So I always loved cooking. You know, cooking was always a, a passion of mine. It was kind of... Uh, I guess uh, hidden inside me we would say um, so you know I was a network administrator for 25 years was computer geek everybody you know that that's what I was I did that for many years but I always cooked mm -hmm. I always did cooking I always cooked for the kids you know whenever I traveled the kids were like come home mom is giving us you know pizza or pasta again with, with, <laughs> with, with peas <laughs> uh, you know so I always had to rush home to, to, to make something good for the kids when I was away traveling um, but it started at home you know my mother was uh, she worked full-time my father worked full-time so you know when my brother sister and I got home from school it was you know you better make something to eat survival so, fittest, survival right? so you know a lot of it came from my brother my brother is an executive chef he has been for many years hmm. um, so you know I followed in his footsteps and started cooking uh, when when there was nothing else to eat in the house and you didn't want cereal That's right. so we just you know started cooking um, and and the passion just continued and escalated inside me from there so four years ago, you know, I looked at my wife and said, listen, I really don't want to do this anymore. Uh, I want to retire from what I was doing from corporate America. And she said, go ahead and do it. Wow. You know, you're going to turn 50 soon. You better do it now or you'll never do it. And what a blessing to have a staff it that was. come along. She, I mean, she's obviously been enjoying the fruits of your labor for years. For years. It comes for years. Cooking up. But the fact that she saw that in you and she wanted to see your dream fulfilled, I think that's such a testament uh, to your relationship. And it really, is. Um, her coming alongside you and making sure, you know what, I'm not going to be fearful because I'm sure you were doing well financially and right. you had a consistent paycheck. And right. What a lot of people don't realize is when you open your own business, especially the restaurant business, 
um, the struggle is real, right? The struggle is real. <laughs> the struggle is, is very real. You know, you go from making a, a very good salary, which we were both making, uh, to, you know, at one point we weren't taking any salary. Mm -hmm. You know, we just need to, you know, pay the rent, keep the lights on, like I tell everybody. Yeah, right. um, you know, good thing for, luckily for us, you know, my son, uh, we sent him to culinary school. That's so he's awesome. come on and helped us, Kenneth. You know, I couldn't do it without him. Uh, my daughter, you know, she's had some restaurant uh, hostess experience and she is here. And also, you guys are such a great community hub too. So tell us a little bit about what this place means to you and the relationships that you're building. And obviously, you're feeding people this incredible food, um, but also it's soul food too. Because, you know, when we walk in the door, it's yeah. like we just want to get that big bear hug from right. Chef T and, right, right. and get that mama hug from Patrice. Right. And you all have really wrapped your arms around the community. So, what does that mean to you? Well, you know, we, we moved here 10 years ago. Uh, to Apopka. Mm -hmm. And you know, we love Apopka. We love, uh, you know, or Orlando, Central Florida. We love the area. So we do as much as we can uh, for the area, for the community. You know, we're part of the chamber and we're part of, uh, you know, different associations. You know, if somebody comes in and, and they need something to eat and they don't have any money, I'm going to feed them. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let somebody, you know, walk around uh, homeless people or whatever. And if they need something to eat, they can always come in here and we'll give them something to eat. It's just, you know, you know, God has blessed us to do certain things and we feel that, you know, we have to return that blessing. Um, so, you know, we, we, we love what we do. We, we love, you know, the breaking bread with people. I mean, that's, that's really, you know, the food is one thing, but to sit down and fellowship mm -hmm. and have a meal with friends and people who become family, like, like yourself, yeah. is, is really what I enjoy most about well, the restaurant. that's like the early church, right? It I is. mean, they didn't have buildings. They it were is. out in the community. They were out in the marketplace. And right. there's something so powerful. You know, when you know somebody's put love, extra special TLC into a meal, you just appreciate it. And right. you can taste that in every bite of what you make. You can. So what words of encouragement would you have for somebody that is really in that season of their life where they feel this pull, this call to step out. They're not happy with what they're doing. They're actually miserable, right. but they're afraid, um, afraid to fail. They're afraid um, that, you know, what if it doesn't work out and I put all of my life savings? What right. words of encouragement do you have someone And I tell you that, right that that's where, where I was. I was at, at a job, which, you know, I didn't, I didn't necessarily hate, but I wasn't, I wasn't having fun anymore. And um, you've got to go out on faith. You've got to step out on faith to do it. Um, you know, because we, that, what you said is exactly what we did. We pulled our money out of retirement, um, you know, and if, if it was maybe 10 or 15 years ago when the kids were younger and I had to worry about them with health care and school and college, it would have been different. You know, we only have the one youngest one home now. He's 16. He's a you know, sophomore in high school. So, you know, he, he's almost a, a man. And he, of course, he already thinks he is. Right. But, um, <laughs> But 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 you've got to do it. There are resources out there that uh, will help you financially. You know they're hard to come by, and but you've got to believe in it. And you've got to go full speed, 100 percent. Because you know we went to many banks and they turned us down and said, no, we're not. We can't. You know you have no experience in doing this. What do you know? You're, if you were opening a computer business, we would maybe consider it. But right. you're opening a restaurant. You've never done this. Um, but we kept looking, we went to SCORE Orlando, we went to BBIF, and they said, listen, we believe in you, That's we're going to write you a check. And they stroked us a check, and they gave us the money. And, you know, we're here three years later. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a dream, I always tell people to follow through with it. You've got to. You know, if, if, if God is pulling you or telling you to go in a certain direction, you need to go in that direction, no matter what it's going to take. You've got to keep moving forward. That's powerful. So many words of wisdom. And I think there's something to be said, too, when your family can really catch that vision and run with you. And right. everybody has their unique gifts and talents and abilities. And right. Just, it sounds so cool how you guys all complement one another. And you guys are truly a beacon of light in this community. And just so thankful for your friendship, your wisdom. I'm always learning something new yep. from you in the kitchen, new <laughs> techniques. Um, but I want to also um, just have people get connected with you. So I know you're on social media. Yes. And you're going to be dropping some more cooking tips and different things too. So yes. we'll have all those links up and then also the link to the website too. So if people are in the Apopka area, they can stop in and try something. I know you guys have a catering menu. We do. But you also like to top off this incredible meal with something sweet, we right? Do, so we do. Intended. We so have tell a, us about your sweet line. So we have a something sweet line. It's, it's, this is all our own uh, dessert line that we have that we do in-house. So uh, uh, we, the something sweet, I don't know if I can call her mascot, I might get in trouble, is my mom. She's so cute. Yes, she is, she yeah. is. Uh, Marjorie Phillips, 
So uh, we have our own line of cakes. We have a lemon, a strawberry, a carrot, uh, chocolate, and they're all freshly made. They're made from scratch, and they're made, uh, we, we, they're j just our own, own cakes that we have here. Uh, they're very good, as, as you know. Oh, yeah. Um, and we, we just wanted to add a little something, you know, after you have a meal that you could sit down and maybe share a dessert with your spouse or whoever, significant other, um, that you didn't have to go out somewhere else. We just wanted to have something in-house that you could have right here. Awesome. And they're really phenomenal. Well, I appreciate you just sharing your journey and your heart and just a testimony of God's goodness in your life it and is. your family. Well, it is. I want to uh, propose a toast. Thank you. Cheers to much success. Thank Never you. Never giving up on your dream. Never give up on your dream. Right? And always walking in your authentic place. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. On today's episode of Authentic Living, we spent quality time with my good friend, Chef T. We saw the amazing man that he was, his heart um, and passion for cooking, how it started really young and that he never gave up on his dreams. And we hope you'll never give up on your dreams as well. We also learned some healthy ways to prepare seafood. And we hope that you'll get in your kitchen at home and be bold and brave and try something new. Listen, on this episode, we hope you are inspired, encouraged and empowered to wake up and live your authentic life.